Hello booktube, my name is David, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with a different sort of video than the usual. Uh, this is going to be the first of what will be a, a continuing series of an unknown number of videos and over an unknown amount of time. So the other day I was watching a video from Steve Donahue and he made mention that he's got a some books that he keeps in a different part of his uh, house, living quarters, whatever the case may be, wherever uh, he happens to be. And on that particular area, uh, he keeps the books that are the the essentials for his collection, the ones that uh, he seeks after, the ones that he doesn't want to ever leave his collection. And it got me to thinking, because most of what you see in Steve's videos are the books that are the ones that kind of go in and out, that ebb and flow over the course of time. And that got me to thinking about what my own ideal book collection would look like. And if I put intentional thought into each and every volume that went on there and justification as to why it should be in there and why this particular volume of it would be the one to have. And granted, some of this is going to take a lot of legwork to, to figure out the answer to those questions. Uh, but there are many books out there that I'm happy to have read that I've enjoyed reading, but that I'm not sure if I'm ever going to revisit, while there are others that I plan to revisit often or currently am revisiting often, and ones that are pillars of my own interests and studies, uh, things that are foundational works in getting a base of knowledge in a certain area that interests me. And so it got me to considering what that sort of collection would look like. And it's going to look different for each and every person because there are going to be books that resonate better with you than they do with me. There are things that I'm going to be super excited to own, to possess, to have on my shelf that will have no interest to you. And so I'm going to break these into 10 book installments as I come up with my sets of 10. I'll make the next video, and I don't know how long it'll be in between. The first set of 10 was relatively easy to come up with, and I think I've already got most of the next 10 uh, at least in consideration. Uh, so, but beyond that, I, I don't know, because there are volumes like uh, The Count of Monte Cristo that what what version would be the, the one that I'd want to have, what translation? would be the one that I would want on my shelf. And that's going to all take some looking into and considering and thinking about what makes it so it would qualify on there. And so I'm going to go through the 10 books today. I'm going to have all of them linked down below to an Amazon link for each of them. I'm also going to have a link for a little wish list that I'm starting with all of the books that I'm talking about that I don't own for those that uh, like to give and be kind. Uh, that will be something that will be embedded on each and every video going forward. I uh, feel no obligation ever to purchase something, but uh, for those that feel called to do something like that, uh, it'll be an easy way to see without duplicating something that I might already have. Uh, to be able to see what's out there and prices and all of that. And so one of the considerations uh, going in on this is also to ignore price, ignore availability. If something's the, the definitive thing that you would want on there, then nothing else should suffice. Now there are things that can be provide a good stopgap, and I've got a couple of those actually on my shelf, ones that uh, would be close to that top tier 
and are suitable, even if I never get to that top tier, but are not that top tier. And where relevant, I'll talk about some of those. So if we're going to start in the same place that Steve Donahue starts with his Western Canon starter kit, we're starting with the Bible. And while his recommendations are starting with the Bible as literature, mine is more of a faith-based uh, resonation in here. And in the decade or so since I've become a Christian, I've read through the Bible. I've uh, read multiple different translations, not all the way through, but I've dabbled in multiple translations. I've owned a couple different copies of various study Bibles and you know the, the, the self-help type uh, themed Bibles and things like that, and I found them to be a mixed bag. Now, my favorite translation of the Bible is the ESV. I'm not one of those purists who think that it has to be King James or nothing. Uh, King James itself is a translation of an original work that is not in English. So those that are purists for the King James, then it's the, the only way, the truth, the life, uh, for those that want to read scripture and understand it, uh, that, that'd be like me reaching out and saying, well, the only way you can really read Beowulf is through a translation that was done 400 years ago because nothing has advanced in how we understand language or words or context and meanings or anything like that in the last 400 years. This is the perfect way to interact with this text, and that's just not true. And the same holds true with Bible translations. The one that I currently have been using, and this is one that I'm happy with, but it's not the one that is on my ultimate list, but I've been doing the C.S. Lewis Bible, uh, and it's an NSRV or NRSV translation. I've enjoyed the translation greatly. Um, I enjoy the, the Lewis Bible and getting to passages where it has some little snippets from C.S. Lewis, but by and large, that's all it has in here. It's the, the text of the Bible and those C.S. Lewis snippets, and this is going to stay on my shelf, even if I get the one that would replace it, but I would want something more of a, I can dive in, dig in, and learn more, and I've had study Bibles. I've had the ESV study Bible, and while there's a lot of great stuff that's in there, I think what I would value most can be found in the NRSV Cultural Backgrounds Study Bible. And so the concept in this one is that it's bringing to life the ancient world of scripture. So the, the, the time frame, the setting of everything in their context. Uh, and I think that's just absolutely fascinating to be able to read something and then be able to have a snippet in there or a passage that just expounds upon the cultural importance of it. Now, the ESV has an arche or, uh, archaeological Bible that just recently came out, uh, and I've read a couple of things comparing these two, and by and large, it sounds like the cultural backgrounds is different enough in what it's doing that it would be more suited to my taste because it's focusing on more than just archaeology. It's providing culture as well. And so that is the first book that is on that list. Next, we go to some Tolkien, because of course, we're going to have Tolkien on this essential list. And so the, the three volumes that I'm looking at here are the quintessential J.R.R. Tolkien works to have on your shelf. These are ones that I have read multiple times for all of them. Some of them I reread almost annually. Um, so the first one is going to be the Silmarillion, and I, uh, this is a version that has illustrations by Ted Nesmith. Uh, and so the there's not any real definitive Silmarillion out there, but this one has a lot of good illustrations to pair along with it and a nice hardcover package. And I think that would be a great one to 
have on my shelf and be able to refer to and look to. Um, it also has, it, it's got the revised corrected second edition, edition text of the Silmarillion. It has a good introduction through a letter written by Tolkien himself. Um, so I, I think this would be a really good volume to have until they come out with something that is more than just the text itself. Um, this would this would be the fun one to have. Now, The Hobbit is a different animal. There is an edition of The Hobbit that I very specifically am interested in, and that is the annotated Hobbit. And why? You're going to hear this with another entry later on this list, but the annotations are wonderful in helping to deepen your understanding. So if you compare it to reading the Bible and they have the, the little notes and they give you expansions on or context of different things that you're reading and help you to understand why something was written this way or explained in that way or how it all ties together, annotations provide that same kind of thing to where they're they're giving you the extra it's like watching the uh, behind the scenes on a film that you really enjoy it, it lets you peel back the curtain a little bit and see a little bit of maybe what the author had gone through some of the the, the processes of getting to where they were maybe some of the changes that were made from version to version as well as expounding upon Things that maybe need a little extra explanation in order to fully understand what is being expressed there and why it's important and all of that. So the Annotated Hobbit is the absolute must-have edition. Now, The Lord of the Rings was in the same kind of situation as the Silmarillion in that there's not really a one single volume out there that is above the rest. And so I did a quick search on Lord of the Rings. I mean, I had a, a 50th edi anniversary edition that was beautiful and really good binding. But something caught my eye quickly. And later this year, in October, there is an illustrated edition of the Lord of the Rings coming. So it has art from Tolkien himself embedded throughout the book. Now, what better way of reading Tolkien's Lord of the Rings than seeing the work art him, that Tolkien himself created to go along with this stuff as he wrote the original text. Um, you know, there, there's nothing else really fancy and special in here that you can't find anywhere else, but I think this is going to be a wonderful edition. And since I don't have an edition of the Lord of the Rings anymore, and I've been looking to pick one up, this seems like the the ideal uh, heavy investment to make in it. I mean, I can pick up cheap paperbacks anywhere. I've got on my Kindle The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings to where I can read and reread them until I get these better editions, but this is the edition that I would want to have on my shelf, uh, the one that I would want to, to crack open every time I want to reread it and just enjoy it uh, as I'm going through. So that takes us through Tolkien. So now we come to one of the major authors that is not only one of my personal favorites, but a foundational author that everyone should read. Everyone should have a, a strong understanding of the author, their works, the impact that they had not just on the literature and the uh, goings on of his own time, but on how that has rippled through literature since then. And it's not the name that you're thinking already. We're talking Geoffrey Chaucer. And here we have the Riverside Chaucer, which is the definitive Chaucer edition for scholarly uh, considerations. And I mean, it's got a lot of good information in here in terms of having 
uh, footnotes and glosses. It's got the um, the works in the, the Middle English. It's just got some good notes at the end of things. This is universally, when you look up the, the essential edition of Chaucer to get, this is the one that is almost unanimously mentioned. Um, this is the third edition of the Riverside Chaucer, and so I'm happy to have this. I was happy to get it. I think I found it for about uh, $10, $15 at my local half-price books uh, a while ago, and I would have been stupid to not snag it up, knowing at the time that this was the edition of Chaucer to get. So now we come to the other giant of literature that I, I would want to make sure is on my shelf. Now, the edition that I have here is not the cream of the crop. It is one of the best ones, but not necessarily the best, and that is the Riverside Shakespeare, which also has some fantastic information inside. And it's got all of the plays in here. Uh, it's got good introductions to each and every play, good information in there. That's the second edition of that Riverside Shakespeare. Now, that is one of the highly regarded ones, but it sounds like, from doing some more research, the Norton Shakespeare is where it's at, is the, the, the pinnacle, the highest, in terms of having a good set of scholarly background and information in there to have as the context. And so that would be the edition that I would want to have. However, there's also a bonus desire for Shakespeare in that the Arden Shakespeare has a, what is deemed to be a really terrible complete works, but they have each individual play and they did a knockout job with each and every one of those and having that information to where they can go in more depth and be more detailed than you could get in a complete volume because it would be a monster to to have all of those notes and expansions and annotations and all of that stuff contained in that one lengthy volume with each and every play contained in there so that would be the the dual nature of what i would want to get is the norton shakespeare which is low priority since i have the riverside but also getting all of the Arden volumes of Shakespeare. So next we have, I don't have the, the ideal version, but we have Beowulf. Of course Beowulf is on this list because if you haven't already heard, I, I'm a huge fan of Beowulf. It's one of my favorite works to read and reread. I've got multiple translations on my shelf. And this translation by Seamus Haney is a good translation. It's a good readable translation. It is not the best translation out there, uh, but it is very serviceable, especially for somebody that is reading it for the first time. And I've got a, a Norton Critical edition of Beowulf with that translation. And I like the Norton Critical because of all the stuff that they have at the back to give uh, essays and backgrounds and you know, texts that help put it in context and texts that maybe were inspired by it or that inspired the work, which in Beowulf's case is not going to be much. But uh, the addition of Beowulf to get would be Kleber's Beowulf, uh, the fourth edition. I've got a very old copy of the third edition but I would want to have the more updated, more recent Beowulf edition. Um, it is by far the standard edition used by students and scholars alike. It's got it in its old English form. It's got lots and lots and lots of good information to pair with the text. And that would be the one that I would want for my shelf. Next we have the Gawain Poet. This edition, if you watched my review, I care less for. Marie Boroff did a good job with translating, but the rest of that edition left a lot to be desired. 
Now, the addition that is on my list for this is on there because, well, most complete works of the Gawain poet, or the Pearl poet, depending on which you're searching for, run about three to 500 pages in length. The Penguin Classics, the works of the Gawain poet, is over a thousand. That tells me they've got good information in there. They've got a wealth of knowledge out there that they've compiled in this one volume that's been made affordable because it's a Penguin Classic. Uh, that would be the essential one to have on the shelf. And in fact, I've watched Steve Donahue's review of this very volume, and he speaks really highly of this one. And so that's another way of how I know that this is the one that I would want on my shelf. So we've got just a couple more. We have Le Mort d'Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory. So this here is the Norton Critical Edition, and so this would be the number two ideal. Um, the it's got the 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 text. It's got it in its original uh, Middle English. It's got all of these extras that Norton Critical is famous for, with the the context and the the essays and all of that at the back. And this is going to be a great volume. I'm happy with this volume. There is, out there, a two-volume set for Le Mort d'Arthur that has the first volume being the, the work itself, uh, and the second volume being 100% on scholarship and essays and a whole bunch of stuff compiled together. That sounds fantastic. I mean, I would love to have the, the, the first volume being the work and then the second volume, a whole book in hardcover being this expanded scholarly stuff on it. The caveat here, the catch, it's expensive. You can get the first book, the uh, just the Le Mort to Arthur itself in paperback for, you know, 30, 40 bucks. But the second volume is only available in the two volume set in hardcover, and it runs well over $200 for that two volume set. Is it worth it? I don't know. I'm very curious. I'm going to maybe try an interlibrary loan to see if I can't get my hands on a copy to look at it before pulling the trigger and making a purchase like that at some point in time in the future. Because if it's not much more valuable than the Norton Critical, then I'm happy with my Norton Critical. And, and there's just not a lot of information out there on this two volume set other than one person that uh, reviews it really, really highly as, hey, this is this is what you want. Now, there's out there um, really highly regarded in older circles a volume called Works uh, by Thomas Mallory, and that has his complete works, which essentially is Le Mort d'Arthur. And it does not look like it really adds much of anything in there beyond the text itself, and so I'm very happy with my Norton Critical. Um, So we have two left to go, or no, one left to go, and that is the annotated Sherlock Holmes. I said that I mentioned annotated again later on, and here it is, and this is a three volume set, and so this selection is for all three volumes counted as the one in the same way that The Lord of the Rings is one. Uh, this is the complete Sherlock Holmes. So volume one containing the adventures of Sherlock Holmes and the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. Volume two having short stories, Return of Sherlock Holmes, His Last Bow, and Casebook of Sherlock Holmes. And then the final volume having the novels. 
uh, so four classic novels. I want these so bad. Um, each one runs 30 to 40 bucks per volume, but they're nice. They're hardcover. They're, they look good. If you watch Michael K. Vaughn's videos when he's at Stately Vaughn Manor, you can see the three volume set because they make this little picture of a silhouette of Sherlock uh, on there when you have the, all three of them side by side by side. And I want that volume on my shelf. I've read the complete Sherlock Holmes. I love Sherlock Holmes. It's a fantastic thing to read. I want to reread it again. And I want the annotations because I think that they would deepen the experience with Sherlock, especially because there's so much that you could easily miss out on as you're going through uh, that this would be the volume that you would want to have uh, to dig deeper into Sherlock Holmes. So there you have it. Those are the 10 volumes. Again, I will have all 10 of them mentioned down below. I will have links to all 10 of them on Amazon. In the case of something like the uh, Le Mort d'Arthur, it'll be linked to the Norton Critical because that's the affordable and honestly, probably more than satisfactory one to have on the shelf for 99% of people. Most people probably don't even care about all that extra stuff. The extra stuff is primarily, you know, of interest to students and teachers and being a teacher of English, of literature, I mean, that, that stuff interests me. And even if I wasn't, I'm interested in that stuff. And so that's why I like Norton Critical and things like that. And I have things like the companion to the Gawain poet and things like that. And those aren't going to be for everybody. I know that. So hopefully this was enjoyable for you to listen to. It's a little bit longer video than normal. Uh, but the next one, I shouldn't have as much rambling to get to the point. And uh, I'll be able to mostly dive right into the next 10 books, which I expect to have that next 10 kind of wrapped up in the next week or two at least uh, and be able to get that out. So. Be sure to let me know if you've enjoyed this, if you want to hear more uh, and hear some of the reasons why these books are the books. If you have recommendations on any of these for a specific edition that maybe I didn't mention, uh, and you're welcome to bring those to my attention because, you know, like anything else, I, I can be convinced that maybe there is a better definitive edition out there to have on my shelf if I'm going to have just one for each of these works. So thank you for watching.